Hi, Roy Oppenheim from The Trenches. Sometimes people ask me what is the process for actually selling a home in Broward County, or, or really for all of South Florida for that matter. And the first thing you gotta do is if you're gonna be selling your home, you gotta make sure you know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you know, you need to think twice about whether or not you're gonna sell your home. Right now we have this thing called the locked in effect, which I've been talking and blogging about in the past. And that is where people feel locked into their homes as sellers because they can't go somewhere. They have a low mortgage, they can't take that mortgage with them. And prices are still very high and they have nowhere to go. So you may end up renting. You may decide moving closer to the kids, moving in, moving in with the kids. Maybe you're going into a, 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 some sort of a complex, you know, for, a, for 55 and over of some type. But you need to know where you're going. So assuming you know where you're going and you want to sell your home, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to list your property. Uh, and the, typically you're going to list your property uh, through the multiple listing service, although you don't have to do that, but that's typically the case. And in order to do that, you'll usually use a realtor. In some instances, people don't use realtors. They don't use the MLS. They just put a sign on their on their on their lawn, and they maybe just even uh, will put it through Zillow. I think Zillow still takes by by owner, but maybe they, they stop doing that. And you then will sell the property by owner. And if you do that, you need to make sure that you have a good attorney uh, waiting uh, to review any contracts that you get in, because the the buyer is going to submit an offer to you once they they. Uh, they see that the property is for sale and you then need to review it and decide whether or not you're going to sign it or if you're going to counter that offer. And if you're going to counter that offer, you need to make sure that when you do the counter that you're not going to lose your buyer. Because if your counter is unreasonable, you're going to lose a buyer and the buyer is no longer going to be on that on that fishing hook. So once you, you reel that buyer in and you have a contract, you of course will then need to uh, disclose, or you don't really have to, uh, but most people do disclose any issues uh, concerning leaks and other problems with, with the house. In some cases, people choose not to disclose and just use an as-is contract and say, you know, I'm not disclosing anything. And legally, they, they can, in fact, do that. And in some circumstances, we advise that there's no need to, 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 to disclose. So you should have an attorney to decide with you what you should disclose and not disclose. We've had litigation many times where people do disclose something and it's not fully disclosed and they don't disclose it properly. Um, and so you, you need to be very careful on your disclosures when you're, when you're selling a home. Uh, once that is done, uh, the title company is going to start preparing title. They'll get the payoffs, get the estoppels from the homeowner association or the condo association. And, and at that point, you better make sure you know where you're going because you have to start putting your stuff in boxes and get ready to move. And on closing day, if all goes well, you sign the deed, you get a check, your mortgage company is paid off, and you have a great rest of your life. Roy Oppenheim from The Trenches. Thank you.